Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I'm so excited today because I am sharing with you guys the new All About Magnet Unit from the Little Learner Science Curriculum. So if you can see behind me, I have it all set up because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you all the goodness and then at the end, I'll do a quick Q&A if you guys have any questions for me. So this is the All About Magnet Unit and it's about attracting and repelling and just using those investigational skills. So testing, trying things out, all of those scientific inquiry skills because there's magnets are kind of simple for, um, as far as the standards go, it's really just more of a push and a pull and attracting and repelling. So you're really just working on a lot of those science inquiry skills like um, setting up an investigation, testing it, and Figure, looking at the results and then seeing kind of what you need to experiment next. So I'm going to show it to you really quick and then I will do a quick Q&A. So let me flip it around. So this is the science table and as always I set up every, I have a science table for each theme. That way your kids can come to the science table, investigate, and they can do it independently because we all know we don't have time for all the things. So let me show you about this science table. So as always, there are vocabulary cards. And in this set, there are vocabulary cards with the definition and a set without. So you guys pick what you wanna use. And then I have two investigations at the table. So the first one is a simple magnetic and not magnetic. So basically you would, um, take items around your classroom and I do have a list for you if you um, need help thinking of things to put on your tray and put out a magnet wand or whatever magnets you have and they get to test it out and then they can put it on the side magnetic or not magnetic so they're sorting by a properties characteristic so I've added things on here like foil because a foil is not magnetic so they might think oh everything that's silver is magnetic um, and you can talk about how these things are the same and how they're different once they're all sorted because we want them when they're sorting they're looking and comparing how things are similar and how they're different so this is one way you can do the sorting um, magnetic not magnetic I also for those of you who love the velcro charts I have this as an option as well so you have a whole bunch of cards that, and they're all again real photographs so they can pick a card and then they would have to test to see if that object is magnetic or not magnetic so I have a key can't see it and then they're testing if that is magnetic or not magnetic and it depends on your key some keys are magnetic and some are not um, so yeah so you can put it on there <coughs> and then as always there is a student recording page because I know a lot of my kinder teachers really want those recording pages so students can be um, accountable so you can have this on the table or if you want it to be simpler you can just take this off the table I'm just going to kind of throw it on the ground so it would look more like that so they would kind of have a little bit more room to investigate and then the other thing I have at the investigation of the science table is figuring out which magnet is the strongest and I there's two um, mats with this challenge so there's a mat with the different kinds of magnets and then there's just a blank mat that way if you don't have all these different kinds of magnets in your classroom you can use that mat and just put those on there and then I made some sensory bottles and this one has paper clips in it this one has pipe cleaners and this there's nothing there's no liquid in these bottles because I I made them with baby oil, but I found out that they would um, leak on me a lot. So I just left them with no liquid. And what they're gonna do is the paperclip one is the easiest one to see. So they're gonna try and see which one is the strongest. So which one is picking up the most objects? So it's hard to do with one hand. But you can see like this one picks up a whole bunch of paperclips. And then like this little round one, the magnet's so weak it doesn't really pick up hardly any unless it's right next to it. Um, so they're testing out the strengths and they're noticing that which magnets are strong and which are not, which are weak. Um, and these are sticking together. And I know some of you guys are gonna ask where I got the magnets from. So I have a teacher store close to me 
and that's where I got a lot of my magnets from. But I know you can go on Amazon and just buy like a little mini magnet pack for like 20 bucks or something. Or like this one's from Lakeshore. Um, these horseshoe magnets are learning resources. This one probably came from some random magnet pack. And these are from my teacher store near me. And then this also has a recording page. So, and you can tell this is probably more for kinder because they have to write at the bottom. So which um, magnet is the strongest and how do you know it was the strongest? So they're gonna have to infer that the one that is the strongest is the one that picks up the most objects or attracts the most objects. So that is one investigation. And, oh, my science table is off center. And as always, there's read alouds. There's one read aloud included. This is the one that's included. And it talks about attracting and repelling and things like that. And you can also print it smaller if you have a smaller science table. And then there are additional, there's um, three other books that are um, a book list that, that <coughs> are good books for K and preschool and pre-K. That way you're not, you know, getting books that are, you know, too hard. And then I did find this fun non-fiction, or fun fiction book. Sorry, he's Magnet Max and he walks around his house and he tries to find things that are magnetic and not magnetic. And so that would be a really fun activity for you guys to do with your kiddos. So give everybody a magnet and they don't have to have the same magnet. They could have, you know, some could have horseshoe magnets, some could have you know, a refrigerator magnet. Some could have like those magnets from your bulletin board and they would each have to find an object that is magnetic and one that is not magnetic. So that could be a fun um, read aloud and then um, connecting activity or you could read the All About Magnets book that's included and then have your kiddos go around and sort um, the, or find objects that are magnetic and not magnetic. And then a couple other fun investigations we have this one my own kiddos loved. So it's build a magnetic robot. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna collect items um, that you have. So I, like these are magnets from like my bulletin board or my easel. And then these are just some round little magnets. These are key rings from the Dollar Tree, um, magnetic bingo markers. These are eyeballs that I just put a magnet on the back, nuts and bolts. And then popsicle sticks with a magnet strip on the back. Oh, and he had these like this, sorry. I had to take it apart. And what they do is you find some cans and again, make sure that bottom is not very sharp or it's not actually, I'm sorry, not sharp at all. And if it is sharp, put some tape around it or you can put hot glue on it on the sharp edge and then put tape on it. Um, if you can't find a um, can opener, I use a Pampered Chef can opener so it is not, um, what do you call it? So it's not sharp. Um, and make sure you test your cans because some cans are magnetic and some cans are not, kind of like the keys. Um, the trays that I did on the sort, those are from the Target Dollar Spot at the, during the back to school season. But you can find those, or, um, there's some similar at Michael's I found and Lakeshore has them as well. So basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna build a little robot using items that are magnetic. So like these don't stick because the can isn't a magnet. So you have to put a magnet in between to build um, some things. And like he, he said this was a reindeer um, robot. He's very, he was like loving the big red nose and put some antlers on and then he wanted a paper clip on top. But so you're gonna have to find, they're gonna have to use the magnets to support the things that are magnetic. And they, if you, um, it's just really fun. And I put the colored bingo chips in there because those can stick as well, um, just to add some color. And then I do have a list included of all, a whole bunch of different ideas for your tray. So if you don't have these things, I have other options for you as well. And then another experiment we have is move the car. So I just made a road mat with some black duct tape and a foam board. And then I just taped a magnet to the car. And what I have to do is try and move the car using the magnet. So they're basically testing how strong the magnetic field is. So if they're really close, it sticks. Or depending on where they put the magnet, it'll stick. But if they put it farther away, if they put it on the side um, or on the top, um, it attracts. And then 
obviously when they're pushing the car with the magnetic field, they're repelling. So you can talk about attracting and repelling and they're testing again to see how strong that magnetic field is because if you put it all the way back here, it's not doing any, it's not attracting or repelling, but if you put it closer, um, it'll attract or repel. So that is another fun exp experiment you can do. And then as always, some of the things that are always in my science facts, I have journal covers and there's three different journals that included um, with different types of lines. So one line, a two line and a dotted line. And then there's a parent note. This is the read aloud printed smaller. And then here are all of the teacher direction pages included. That way you can visually see some ideas on how to set it up. And then I include labels. I use these iris bins from Michaels um, or uh, Amazon to store my science units in. That way I can put like, um, <coughs> like the mat in there and things like that. So I'm gonna turn it around and see if you guys have any questions for me. So I haven't seen any questions yet. Um, so if you have a question about the magnet unit, go ahead and pop it in. But I wanna know, when do you guys do um, a magnet science unit? Do you do it? I'm actually gonna do it during Valentine's slash like friendship week, since magnets attract and they stick together because friends stick together. So that's when I'm gonna do my um, magnet unit. Um, but when do you guys? do your magnet unit do you do it in like the in the fall during kind of back to school because I mean magnets are really fun oh the cars are just hot wheel cars so they're just those dollar hot wheel cars from like the dollar store or like target <coughs> excuse me um yeah and then oh I do want to put this disclaimer out if you have kiddos who eat things do not put any magnets out that are chokeable. So you're gonna wanna put out big <laughs> magnets and like um, horseshoe magnets. And like if you have two-year-olds, these are the only magnets you're probably gonna have out. Um, because if they swallow a magnet, it can really damage your insides. And you, sometimes kiddos have to have surgery to get those magnets out because they're, the magnets attract and repel inside your body and they, can break through your intestines and it can be very very dangerous i also want to give you another disclaimer if you have a kiddo with a pacemaker or any um sometimes any kind of other medical device like implanted inside of them like i had a kiddo one year with a pacemaker so we did not have magnets out in the science center all year well actually i had them for two years so we didn't have any magnets out for two years in my classroom and we were fine like we just did other science things um but that magnet could have really interrupted his pacemaker and um you know caused health problems or you know, injury to his pacemaker. So if you have a kiddo with a pacemaker, um, don't use magnets <laughs> um, to keep him healthy and safe and all of that. So if you have kiddos with medical implants, check with their mom and dad, or even better, check with your nurse. If you can have magnets in your classroom, if this will be safe for you to do. And then again, remember, if you have kiddos who mouth things, even if you have a five-year-old who is putting things in their mouth, don't put them out that are tiny. Again, use these big, big magnets you can because you can put a paper clip out just to get the big ones um or even those like giant paper clips so yeah we just gotta remember magnets are a little dangerous um and we, we want to keep them safe and i have seen um you can put out things that are magnetic like magnetic letters um and i do have all of these ideas for you and in, included so if you do have a toddler class I have a list of all the things that are magnetic, so you're just gonna wanna pick out the things that are big, <laughs> that they can't swallow, right? Um, so that way we just keep our kiddos safe, because that's the one, that's the most important, right? Keeping them safe, healthy, and happy. So you guys enjoy your day. You guys have a fabulous weekend, or fabulous weekday, whenever you're watching the replay, and I will talk to you guys soon.